Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to be going over how we can set up our widgets or user interfaces to be used with a gamepad or game controller without the use of any sort of add-ons. Um, a lot of people seem to struggle with this, there's actually a pretty cheap trick that we can do um, where we false keyboard inputs using a controller and that will allow us to use a user interface with our controller rather than with our mouse. So the first thing we're going to need is an actual widget. So we're going to right click user interface widget blueprint. Let's call this my widget. I'm going to open this guy up. Now this is our canvas over in the left hand side under palette. We're just going to add two buttons to the canvas. So click and drag button down to canvas panel. But we only want to do that once. So we can just resize this guy right click and copy our button and then right click and paste in our second button which is now happily named button 2 because we deleted button 1 come on because I know that people are going to complain if that's not entirely symmetrical I think that is whatever don't kill me we're going to delete the things that are already inside the graph if we need any of that we'll add it again later in the left hand side under my blueprint under variables click on button 0 at the bottom here we've got events on clicked we're going to press a little green button drag out from here and we're just going to print a string and we're going to have this say left button select our second button on clicked print string and you probably guessed it i'm going to make this say cake no i'm not <laughs> it's going to say right button if only there was a button for cake, could you imagine just a button for infinite cake? I'd be slamming that button. Slamming it. So now we've got two buttons. One will allow us to just print button, uh, print strings for each button. We're going to close this down. That's all we're going to do in there for now. Next, we're going to select our third person character, open this guy up, and this is where we're going to start messing about with our actual um, UMG or, or widget. So what we're going to do is right click event, begin play. Now the reason I'm doing it this way is because I want this widget to always exist but not be used. So what we're going to do from event begin play is we're going to create widget. Now under class we're going to select my widget. Right click. Get player controller. Plug this into owning player. There we are. Now what we're going to do is we're going to immediately add this to viewport. Uh, add to viewport. But then what we're going to do is, because we don't want this, we're actually going to set visibility of the user interface to hidden, because we don't want to be able to see it. So if I break this right now and we press compile, if we press play, we'll immediately get our buttons showing. Yay, and you can see they're working, they're printing the strings correctly. If we were to go back into our third person character and we plug this in, compile, close down, press play. We don't have a user interface. Oh no, no user interface, boo. So how are we gonna make sure that we've got a user interface available to us when we need it? Well, we're gonna add a button press on our game controller. Now, I'm just gonna use a basic key, so gamepad special right, which on most controllers is the start button, or I think, what's this button called on the Xbox One controller? I don't know, it's the three lines. I don't know what the, Things are called now. I only have a play on my PC. <laughs> I know, don't hurt me. Um, we're going to pull out from create widget from the return value, set visibility to visible. Now, if we compile this, close this down and press play. If we press the front key on our controller, we can make it pop up. So that's, that's the first hurdle. We can now make it pop up using the game controller. Really, really easy, simple. So, what do we now need to do? We need to actually make it so that we change our input mode. So from our get player controller, we're going to set input mode. Now, normally we would use a UI only if we're going to be using keyboard and mouse. I want to set up something for a controller. For the controller to work inside of the the uh, the widget, we still need game mode. Uh, we need game and UI, <laughs> so set 
input mode game and UI and this will allow us to still feed controller inputs from our player character into the widget when we need it. Drag it from the return value from the create my widget and plug it into the widget focus. Ta -da. And now if we compile, we press play. If we now uh, press our button, we can open this up and we can go to our, our mouse and we can highlight the buttons. Whereas normally that would just move our camera, but we're getting both. Yay. Next thing that we're going to do is we are going to actually focus on those buttons. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to select one of our buttons. So from create my widget drag out, and we're going to say get button. Uh, we want get button zero. So that's going to be our left hand button. That's the one that I want to have focused at the start. If you want the right hand focused, you go for it. If you want something else focused, go for it. The way to check if anything is focusable, open up your widget, select it on the hierarchy and under search, just search for the focusable. And if you can see that it is focusable and you got this ticked, you can have that as focus. Certain things can't be focused, such as text. You can't focus on text because you can't select text technically because it just sits there. Other stuff you can focus. So this will work with anything that's focusable. So we've got our button inside of our player. That's great. But how do we actually focus this? We set keyboard focus and we plug this in. Compile. And now some of you, if you're aware of how that works, are going to say, this is not going to work. If I press a button, you can see it's not focused. The reason we don't have any focus there is because it's setting visibility and focusing the entire widget in our screen at the same time as it's trying to focus our keyboard on a single button. So it's getting two inputs at practically the exact same moment. So what we need to do is before we set keyboard focus, we just want to delay. We're going to set this to a relatively small delay, 0.1 second. And now if we head back into the game and we press our button, you can see now we've got this little dotted line. See that? Now our controller is able to move that. I'm using my controller to move the dotted line. When you first focus, the original focus isn't going to be dotted lined. It will only dotted line after you move your your controller, but we're going to build something that will actually allow us to highlight these on our own without these dots. But you can see there, if I press left and right, or if I use the D-pad, I can select and press a button using the controller. Hooray! He's a genius. So he's a genius. What am I talking about? What we're going to do now is we're going to head into the widget. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And what we want to do here is we actually want to create something that's going to highlight the buttons. So what we will do is we will make something from the construct, the event construct. When the event, uh, when the widget begins, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? We want to have a custom event. No, we don't. We want a, a timer by event. Timer by event. So we set timer by event. I want this to check every 0.1 second. It's not going to happen every tick. And I've seen some people who do this every tick. Don't do it every tick. It's ugly. We're going to custom event and we're going to call this focus or whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it focus because it's just easy to keep track of. We want this to be looping. Now, what do we do here? Okay, so we need to check to see which button is currently focused. So we're going to need our buttons. Obviously, if you've got more than two buttons, this is going to take a little bit longer, but that's fine. From our first button, drag out, make array. There we are. Add a pin for each button and plug your button in. That's going to put these into an array. And then what we want to do is drag out from our array for each loop, which is basically going to go through our list of different buttons. And for each button, it's going to do a thing. What is the thing that we're going to do? We want to check if it has keyboard focus. And we're going to branch. If it does have keyboard focus, drag out from the array element and then set background color. If it has got focus, we're going to highlight this in green. Pick whatever color you want. It doesn't have to be green. I just like green. Then we'll copy and paste this. And if it doesn't have focus, then 
we're going to set this to white. Compile, press play, press a button, and you can see it's immediately highlighted one green and one white before we had dotted lines. Okay, and we can test that again. Press play, press the button. Ooh, we have to actually be inside the game. Press the button, and you can see it's highlighted a green, and I can tap it with my controller, and it will work just fine. So that's working so far. What do we want to do now? Well, preferably we want to be able to drop this menu down by pushing a button in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say on this button clicked, get over there, each key. We want to set visibility of self to hidden. And then we need to get player character. From player character, we want to, well actually no, we don't even need that. We're going to set input mode to game only. The player character is going to come into play later on, don't worry about it. Get player controller, plug the player controller into the user, uh, into the set input mode, we'll get rid of that guy. Compile, and now if we press play and we press our button, you can see it's doing a thing, and if I tap on this one, it will now close the thing down. And we can reopen it up. Yay! Nice. The next thing we need to do is we need to stop our character from moving around. Obviously, if we're inside of a menu, we don't want to be able to run around the world. So what we're going to do is open up our third-person character, and then drag out our character movement. From character movement, we will disable movement after we set our keyboard focus. So keyboard focus will occur and our player will stop moving and now he won't move again. The problem being, he doesn't start moving after it closes back down again. <laughs> so open up our widget, go to our graph, and this is where we wanted our player character. So get player character. Now if your game mode is set up correctly, it's going to recognize that player character is a specific blueprint. In this case, it's just a third person blueprint. If your game mode character and your actual character that you're using don't align, you're going to have to cast here. You're going to have to cast to your character and plug in get player character to the cast because it's already set up for us. I don't need to worry about that. So what I'm going to do is get player character and then enable. Uh, no, I'm not going to enable. I'm going to set movement mode of character movement to walking. Oops. Get in there. there we go. Compile that. Close this down. Press play. If I push the button, not moving. If I turn it off, we start moving again. Slight problem with this, however, if we jump and then we push it, our character's just going to float. We don't want a floating guy. This is not the way we want to do it. So what we're actually going to do here is open up our third person character again. And we're not just going to disable movement. After keyboard focus, we're going to branch. From character movement, we're going to drag out and ask, is falling? Plug this into the ball. So is our character falling? Well, if he's not falling, disable movement because we just want him to stop moving. If he is falling, what we're going to do is we're going to set our character movement mode. So set movement mode to falling there we are so now if we open up our menu while we're jumping our character will fall the problem here is as soon as he lands he can walk again because on land you get to start uh, walking again so we're going to stop that from happening by going back into the third person character and after our set movement mode we want a re-triggerable delay, and we're just going to trigger this every 0.2 seconds. On completion, go back to the branch. Now that looks a little bit ugly, but it works really nicely. It's not going to stick you in an infinite loop. And instead, if we jump, press our button, when the character lands, he'll no longer walk around. And you can see here, we can use our lovely, lovely buttons. Now the only thing that we, we still need to set up here 
is a way to close the menu without using a button inside the widget. And what we're going to do is because we've already got our game mode, uh, our input to mode, game, and UI, we can just say gamepad, face button, right, which is the B button on an Xbox controller or a circle, I think, on a PlayStation. Uh, unpressed. What we want to do is go from the widget set visibility to hidden. Then we're just going to go from our player controller set input mode to game only. We no longer need to be able to move around inside of our menu and we don't want to be able to move around inside of our menu while our character's running around because we don't want to accidentally select stuff in our menus. And then from our character movement, we're just going to set movement mode to walking. There we are. Now what we can do is we can run around, we can press the button, we can move around now. I've got that one highlighted, I press B, it will close and we can run around again. And as you can see, it's all working. Nice and tasty. Yay! Awesome. So there we are. Lovely, lovely. Pretty, pretty nice. Hee 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 hee. What we're going to just do here is we're just going to add a little thing there because I noticed a little bit. If we jump, push, and then we press to cancel it, it can't move until we press the B button again. So what we're going to do is inside of our third person character is we're just going to say, uh, we're going to check to see if our character's falling here. So, put the is falling in. Now, obviously, if you want to just make copies of these and bring them down here, just so you've got less of this spaghetti, that's fine. It doesn't matter at all. Bring these down. If he's not falling, then do a thing. But if he's falling, we're not going to be able to close the menu. There we go. Now you can use it. There we are, slight bug fixed on the fly. Woohoo! And there you have it. That's how we can set up basic UMG slash widget movement with a controller without using any additional add ons or plugins for the engine. Um, it's quite a nifty little thing to do. Um, and it just makes things a little bit easier for you guys without having to study plugins and stuff. So you have it. Obviously, if you want to use different key binds, you can. If you want to set up specific inputs inside of your uh, inside of your project settings, then you can. But I'm just using basic button inputs here because I don't need them to have special names or anything because this isn't my project. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for watching. Um, there you go. Hopefully some of you guys are going to find that useful. See you guys next time.